Wisteria. Energy. 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 Twist. 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 Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. We are continuing Haunted Yorkshire. We're in South Yorkshire and we're in Greensboro. Phantom pedestrians wander the pavements of several South Yorkshire streets and highways, causing chaos and confusion to many of the motorists of today. From the bend at Wortley Church to the notorious Stocksbridge, Stocksbridge Bypass, these spirits have caused many a crash, some fatal. In the Greensboro area between 1980 and 1985, on a stretch of road known locally as the Winds, which runs south from the village of Netherhall, there were three incidents of motorists screeching to a halt to avoid hitting a woman who had stepped out of the shadows and onto the paths of their cars. Mrs Mary Breeden, a former worker for the probation service in Barnsley, watched a tall woman in white step out from a large house on the Fitzwilliam estate and disappear. Mrs Breeden rapidly brought the car to a halt and climbed out and was further stunned to find no trace of the woman anywhere. When she arrived at the meeting she was due to attend that evening, a former colleague told of other experiences on the same stretch of road she had just had hers. A young man had been startled to watch the woman not only step in front of his car, but actually hit the bonnet, slam against the windscreen, and disappear somewhere over the roof. When police were called to the scene, an extensive search of the area revealed no trace of the victim. In the third incident, a woman travelling in the passenger seat as her husband negotiated his car down the hill saw the woman in white appear, then disappear in a split second. Her husband, however, did not see her, although he had been looking straight ahead at the time. There are no ghostly legends attached to this stretch of road, and yet, these three witnesses, unknown to each other, each experienced a similar occurrence within the space of five years. As far as I know, there have been no further reports of this nature, but perhaps it's just a matter of time before there's more. And that is the stretch of road, the winds in Greaseboro. Then we go oh, now, well, so now we go to... Hickleton. As I was concentrating on modern accounts of ghosts and hauntings while researching for this book, I was very doubtful when I read of a phantom horse and rider of the small village of Hickleton near Goldthorpe, because it sounds exactly like a cobwebbed old myth rather than an actual supernatural experience. However, when I delve further into the account written by psychic investigator Terence Whitaker, I realised this is a ghost that, although dressed in a tire of centuries past, has only been reported by motorists and pedestrians in comparatively recent years. Terence is the author of several books on ghosts, another on the double murderer Dr. Buck Ruxton, an award-winning play for the disabled. In addition to this, He's written and presented regional programmes for TV and radio on supernatural subjects. He has also investigated many hauntings personally as well. He's had a few brushes with the paranormal, but this one, well, experienced at the age of 16, remains etched firmly in his memory as the most frightening, says Terence. In those days, I lived with my grandmother in Fernska and worked at Doncaster, about 11 miles away. Because I didn't finish work until after 10.30pm, the last bus left Doncaster at 9.30pm. I had to cycle home every night. Leaving Doncaster, I would cycle up the Barnsley Road through Scoresby and Ma, and then begin a gradual uphill climb to Hickledon. Hickledon is neighboured by coal pits, but... It is an island of charm, really, with a fine church at the crossroads 
and behind it, the 17th century home of the Halifax family. Apart from that, several small cottages make up the remainder of the village. On this particular night, as I cycled up the tree-lined road towards the church, I could see between the trees on my left the road which would cross my path outside the church. There was very little traffic along the year in those days, but had anything been approaching the crossroads from my left, I would have been able to see it quite well. I was surprised to see a figure on horseback trotting in a leisurely way towards the junction. I remember thinking to myself, what a funny time for someone to be on an horse. For although it was late June and quite light, it was after 11pm. The horseman came to the crossroads and stopped, looking down the road as I was cycling. And suddenly, the horse shied, and I was able to distinguish quite clearly a billowing cape and a tricorn hat. That in itself was bad enough, but then to my absolute terror, both horse and rider vanished before my eyes. I was no more than fifty or sixty yards away by this time, and I think it would be an understatement to say I was frightened. I was terrified. In fact, had I not been so near home, I would have turned back to Doncaster. As it was, I put my head down and pedalled furiously past the spot, covering the last two miles or so in record time. Since then, while doing research for my books on ghosts, I have had one or two other frightening experiences, but I don't think I have ever been so terrified as I was that night in 1953. When I reached home and had fully recovered, I told my grandmother of my experience, thinking she would accuse me of being over-imaginative, but she just listened quietly and then suggested I have a word with one of the neighbours who had been a policeman who used to patrol that area on his bike some years before. The neighbour told me he had seen the ghost himself on one occasion and that several people living in the village had reported seeing it, but no one knew who it was. One theory was that it was a ghost of a man ambushed by troops and killed on the spot. Research, though, over the years has, unfortunately, failed to bring any fresh evidence to light. But I understand the ghost has been seen as recently as 1977 by a lorry driver who braked hard on reaching the crossroads when a figure on a horse suddenly appeared from nowhere and vanished just as quickly. Interesting. And that's that story done. But it's interesting that it's a horse and a rider. There's not many of those now. So now we're going to head to Raw Marsh. In December 2002, Staff and students of Raw Marsh Comprehensive School told newspapers how they had experienced a range of phenomena on the premises. Mr John Key, a clerk of, wor a clerk of works at Rotherham Council, was working at the school and reported that he had seen the apparition of a stooped man, around five foot six inches tall and dressed in a suit, walk straight through a wall. Officials thought it was a leg pull at first but later two former caretakers came forward to tell of their similar sightings of a ghost. An old graveyard used to adjoin the school and, as is often the case, the theory is that the spirits of the dead have been disturbed by building work carried out on the building. The old stage area of the school was being redeveloped as science laboratories and this was pinpointed as the cause of the disturbances. When a surveyor was sent to the school to take photographs of the area, Prior to work being started, he was astounded to find odd shapes on the photograph. They looked like bubbles, though there was nothing visible at the time to explain them. A spokesman for the school said that there seemed to be images of people's faces within the bubbles or orbs, as many investigators of the paranormal call them. The spokesman then said, One has a beard, another looks like a skull. It's very weird. The surveyor was very shaken after he examined the photographs and was Mr K after he saw the ghost. Pupils of the school have often reported sightings of an extra classmate in the school, one that is there one minute and simply gone the next. Also, one Sunday, engineers were working at the otherwise empty school when they heard the distant sound of an organ being played. 
although they searched thoroughly, they could find nothing to account for it. When they inquired about it the following week, they were informed that there were no organs on the school premises. Interesting. And that is Romash Comprehensive School. So, yeah, I find that very interesting indeed, especially when it's schools, because if you're having renovation, apparently it's said to disturb certain spirits. So it would make sense. I'm going to leave this episode here, guys. And when we come back, we're going to head over to Rotherham. Rotherham's very close anyway. Um, most of you might be aware, but I live in a small old mining village. So there is still the old mines. There is there's quite a lot of history where I live. Very small village, but a lot of history. And this part of our room's kind of like the same. It has a lot of history. But thank you for listening and many blessings. Wisteria. 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 Energy. 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 Twister. 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 Twister.